Today's video is going to be a comparison between the Pulsar XP50 Thermion 2 Pro Series and the brand new infrared Bolt TH50C. These scopes have a lot in common, but there are some big differences. So we're going to go over those and see which one is best for you. The first thing you're going to notice about these two thermal rifle scopes is that they're both the tube series type scopes. They work equally well on a bolt action rifle or a modern sporting rifle. The reason these tube type scopes are so popular is because you can use them on any type of firearm or even a crossbow. The only thing you need to attach either of these scopes to any type of firearm is just a set of 30 millimeter rings that fit a Picatinny rail. Because these tube type scopes sit in rings instead of on a solid mount, they can be moved backwards and forwards on your Picatinny rail and within the rings itself. So you can always get the proper eye relief no matter what type of firearm you shoot. So let's look at these two scopes and see what is common with both of them and see what the differences are. The main reason is that I want to give you the information you need to make the best choice. I'm not going to try to tell you which one is best for you or which one of these scopes is better than the other. I just want you to be able to know all the information you need so that you can pick the right scope for your particular hunting needs. If we look at the specs for both of these scopes, they are both high definition, 640 resolution thermal rifle scopes. What that means is you get an outstanding picture. The image out there, especially on nights in the fall or in the winter when it's nice and clear, is unbelievable. I mean, you, you can see uh, animals for over a thousand yards and some animals, larger animals, you can detect exactly what they are. It ranges up to 500 yards. But since the images are so close, I really wouldn't tell you to make a, a decision on which one of these scopes to pick based on the image because they are both really beautiful images. Okay, let's look at the next thing. Let's look at the external features of both of these scopes. They're both 50 millimeter objective lens. They both have adjustable objective lens so you can focus in and get a very clear image at any distance. They both have adjustable ocular lens so you can set it for your eye whether you have good vision or not so good vision like me. The controls are all in the, basically the same place or, or very easily accessed, especially the controls that you need while you're on stand like recording, zooming, and turning the power and power standby on and off. They work equally well for left-hand shooters or right-hand shooters, and they're just easy to use. So either one of these scopes, one is just as easy to use as the other. Now we've got an image that's almost the same. We have controls that are easy to use. Another thing people look at when they're selecting a scope is the, the battery life. Well, both of these scopes have around 8 to 10 hours of battery life. They both have an internal rechargeable battery that lasts anywhere from, you know, 5 to 8 hours. And they both have backup power. Now, when I say backup power, the Thermion originally came, when it was produced, with this replaceable rechargeable battery. So you could carry a spare in your pocket, so if you ran out of power... You know, you could uh, pull it out of your pocket and replace it and keep on hunting. Well, the original Thermion batteries were a little bit short on life. They give you about five hours of runtime. The new Pro Series, uh, which is all they're producing now, the internal battery will give you five to six hours, and the external battery will give you two to three hours of runtime. So that's, that's quite a bit of runtime. Likewise, the Bolt also has the internal battery that lasts about eight hours. This internal battery lasts a little bit longer than this internal battery. This scope does not come with a battery like the like the Thermion does. The battery for the Pulsar Thermion can only be purchased from Pulsar or, or a dealer. 
and that's the only kind of battery that will fit in here. On the Bolt, however, this backup battery is not provided with the scope, but you can use your own backup battery, which will be an 18500, which only costs about $5 to get a couple of hours of runtime. If you need extra time, you just pull one out of your pocket, replace it, you got another two or three hours of runtime. So the difference between the, the battery power is just the Thermion uses Pulsar uh, rechargeable, replaceable batteries, and the Bolt uses a readily available 18500 battery that you can buy on Amazon, eBay, or anywhere. So you got a toss up here. The batteries are the same, the, the lenses are the same, the controls are both easy to use, not, not exactly the same, but the biggest differences in these scopes are the base magnification and the field of view. The Pulsar has a 2x base magnification. The Bolt has a 3.5x magnification. What that means is the Bolt is designed for a little bit longer shooting range. If we put this in thermal hunting terms, this is basically better for hog hunting if that's what you do most of the time or, or relatively close in shots, say under 200 yards. And this bolt is designed, I think, specifically for coyote hunters. <laughs> I joke about it all the time. I think that TH-C stands for coyotes <laughs> because this is, is more designed for coyote hunting than it is for hog hunting. Now, when you look at these uh, base magnifications, it not only affects the size of the image you see in the, in the screen, it also affects the... Uh, field of view. The field of view for the pulsar is like 65 feet wide at 100 yards, where the bolt is only 46 feet wide. So you get about a 20 foot wider field of view at 100 yards. When you're looking across the field, you'll see a lot more of the field when you use the pulsar than you do with the bolt. But when you see that animal and you start zooming in on him, the animal will appear much larger in this scope. That's why it's better for long range shooting. Now why would you pick a 2x when you can get a 3.5? Well when you're hunting at night it's a little bit different than when you're hunting in the daytime. Hunting at night the only vision you have is what you can see through that scope. You have no peripheral vision. You, you, you can't just look around out here. Even when you have a scanner with you, you still are dependent on that one little part and one eye that you can look around and look for game. And it makes it very difficult to spot everything that's out there because, you know, wild animals are always moving. A coyote's not going to just go out there and sit down on top of a hill in a wide open and wait for you to see him. He's moving everywhere. He's going in and out of the bushes, over the hills, behind the trees, and you got to catch him. You know, you got to catch that movement before you can actually zero in on the animal to see what it is. With a wide field of view, even though you don't have a lot of magnification, that heat signature is still going to show up. You're still going to see that animal out there in your scope, in your, in your image. He just won't appear as large. And you'll see a much larger area if you're using a 2x magnification than you will a 3.5. So what that means is when you're looking through your scope, you have a, a better chance of spotting an animal. After you spot the animal, then you have to identify the animal. Is this the right animal? Well, with the two power, it's sometimes difficult. And if you zoom the image uh, so that you, you know, double it from two power to say four power, then it cuts your resolution down. So you're, you're constantly fighting that, that monkey of magnification versus resolution. So if most of the time you're hunting at small animals like a, a coyote versus a pig, and they're normally seen at or picked up or identified at longer ranges, you might need a scope that has a higher base magnification. And I think that's that's where the the uh, bolt, you know, has the advantage. The the pulsar might have an advantage of detecting more animals out there in the in the area quicker 
because you can see more area, but probably the scope with the higher base magnification has better identification capability. And that's very important when you're hunting coyotes because you're having to identify animals at longer range that a coyote sometimes looks like a small calf or a small deer. And when you're out there to, at long range, you have to have a scope that you can positively ID. One of the most important things when you're hunting is, is safety. And safety includes identifying the animal before you take a shot. And with a higher base magnification, you probably will be able to identify targets at longer range. So the Pulsar has an advantage of seeing more targets out there with a single sweep of the area, or not sweeping at all, where the uh, infrared bolt would give you a quicker target identification. Okay, let's look at one more thing. Like I said before, the magnification also affects the field of view. If you primarily hunt hogs, you're normally going to get up close to them, relatively speaking, a lot closer than you would for coyotes. I know like Jason likes to get in 30 or 40 yards <laughs> before he starts shooting. I don't like to get in that close. Usually if they're in an open field, you know, I like to start at about 100 yards. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times they are in a lot closer. You start at 50 yards. After the first shot, they all scatter. So when you start sweeping from side to side, it's a lot easier to pick up a running hog if you have a wider field of view. You see them out of that outside part of the vision and you swing the crosshair to them. With this scope, it has a, a more narrow field of view, so you won't be able to do that as well for a target that's close up to you like hog hunting. But when you're coyote hunting, you don't usually have that problem. You're not sweeping way left and way right you know, and trying to pick up targets back and forth. You normally have a single coyote or maybe a double come in. And when you put that first coyote down, you, before you ever take the shot, you know where that second one is. He's either a little bit closer, a little bit farther away, a little bit left, a little bit right. But they won't, they won't be spread all over the field and running away until you make that first shot. And then you just swing on the second coyote. And it's easy to follow them when you have a scope that has a 46-foot field of view. So... That's not an issue. The first thing you have to decide is when you're picking one of these scopes is how far are most of your targets away from you when you shoot? You know, if everything is inside 100 yards, you probably want a, a, a 2x scope. If everything is beyond 100 yards, out to 200, 250, you're probably better off with a, a 3.5 power scope. Both of these scopes have the controls you need when you're on stand without going into the main menu. To make changes. The record and the power button are right here at your fingertips on each one of these scopes. On the Pulsar, the zoom button is also included right here on, on the eyepiece. With the bolt, the zoom is up here with this top knob. It's just, this rotates, you can feel the clicks, you don't really hear it click, but you can feel the clicks. Each one of those clicks is about one third of a power. So if you're going from three and a half power up to four and a half power, it's three clicks. Now, this is a little slower. When you're using this, it's a little slower to get up to higher uh, zoomed in magnifications than it is the Pulsar because the Pulsar goes from two to four to eight to 16, but it's a series of clicks. This one, you have to turn the knob. Still, they both have advantages. One of the advantages of having this zoom is that you only have to zoom it up to where you need it. You don't have to jump all the way from two to four to eight. If you're on three and a half, you might want to just zoom it up to five, good enough to either identify the target or make the shot. Where on the Pulsar, if you double it, you're going to lose half your resolution. So it puts it down to a 320 scope. If you hit it again, it's going to cut it in half again. By the time you get up to eight power, you still may not be able to identify the target because even though it's zoomed in, the clarity is not that good. So you still may have trouble identifying the target. On the bolt, you can just turn it up to wherever you 
more comfortable and you can sort of have that choice of anywhere between 3.5 all the way up to 14. You can zoom it up to what you need and zoom it back. It's very simple. So you have more zooming options with the Bolt than you do with the Pulsar. So that's most of the differences. Either one of these scopes will serve you well, but as far as hunting and what you see out there, the images are almost identical. It just appears that the animals are closer in the bolt because it's a higher base magnification. I like both of these scopes. <laughs> if I could afford both of them, I would own both of them. But since I don't, I've got to send this one back to Jason after the, uh, the review. We're going to have at least two more videos of hunts of coyotes and hogs with the bolt. So if you want to compare the images and sort of, you know, see the differences, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to see us hunting hogs and coyotes with both scopes. I think we even have one hunt where we have uh, a hog hunt where we have the video of the same animals at the same time in each scope. So we'll even be able to do that. But either one of these scopes are going to serve you well. You will not be disappointed in the Bolt or the Thermion Pro. I mean, both of these scopes are really great. You get a fantastic image. It's easy to use, both when you're on stand and setting up. Setting these scopes up, you know, is just a piece of cake for the average person now because you're used to setting up, you know, your cell phones and your digital cameras and everything. It works the same way. All this is is a thermal camera with a crosshair in it so it's, it's not that hard if an old man can do it anybody can do it so i appreciate you stopping by as always if you have a need for a, any type of uh, thermal or night vision optics call jason uh, robertson at outdoorlegacygear.com his number is 877-350-1818 i'll put it up here on the screen and so give jason a call or, or hans one of those guys i answer the phone out there well, they'll probably have to call you back because they're so busy. But they have both of these in stock. And uh, right now is the time to get one. I'm telling you, I mean, right now the conditions are perfect. This is uh, October. Hunting season is fired up. Uh, all the uh, farmers and ranchers have cut the crops. You can see the hogs out there. The uh, coyote pups are out of the den. They're running, running wild. So now is the time to buy one of these scopes. And I would highly recommend either one of them. So thanks for watching. Come back and see us, and please subscribe. And if you have any friends, share this on your social media page because anyone that's thinking about getting into uh, thermal optics, they'll want to see this video too.